Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. The big question in New York right now is what to do about the state's $15 billion budget deficit. And as we've told you, there's a lot of different ideas for filling that gap. One of them is raising taxes on the rich, which Democrats in the legislature actually support. We were expecting that to be a big issue next year when lawmakers return to Albany in January. But as it turns out, that could be happening sooner than we thought. Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty said this week that lawmakers could still come back to Albany before the end of the year to pass new taxes on the wealthy. Uh, and so we're just having conversations back and forth based on what our members have said to us about the possibility of um, maybe coming back uh, to, uh, to do uh, some of the hot button issues, uh, looking at revenue. The governor even said he knows we need revenue. But Governor Cuomo came out a few days later and basically said no thanks. Not because he's against raising taxes on the wealthy, but because he wants to wait for a stimulus package from Congress before making any big moves. He says that will help the state decide how much to raise taxes and if there needs to be any cuts. Here he is this week. You can't divorce a tax increase from a budget action. I can do it either way. But you have to do a tax increase in the context of a budget. Otherwise, you don't know how much to, to raise in taxes. Otherwise, it's just a political gesture. So let's talk about it with Amanda Fries from the Albany Times Union and Bernadette Hogan from the New York Post. Thank you both for joining me. Thanks. Thanks. So the big question is, are we coming back this year? I guess we have two weeks left in the year. Lawmakers could come back to the Capitol. I would say it's unlikely. Bern, what are you hearing? Right, so we have two weeks until January 1st, start of next session. Lawmakers and Governor Cuomo are really pressured to raise money to close this massive revenue gap, mainly caused by the coronavirus pandemic. It's going to be tough. Um, lawmakers are going to have to actually have a plan with or without the governor. So right now, I'm not sure. Uh, the state Senate, they had a retreat last week, and the state assembly had one in, by retreat within conference to see what their priorities would be and what they need to do. I heard that the state Senate has not spoken since last week as one big conference, and the state assembly, uh, Speaker Carl Hasty, the leader of the Democrats, he said that he does want to come back potentially to uh, raise taxes on at least the wealthiest of New Yorkers and it, it remains to be seen. I will say in just a few minutes on the show, we have Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and we will ask her if they're going to come back by the end of the year, so stick around for that. Mandy, what are your predictions? Do you think lawmakers are gonna be coming back sometime in the next few weeks? I, it remains to be seen, just like Burns said. However, we also have the eviction moratorium, right. um, which for a lot of folks have argued it's not a real eviction moratorium, so they're hoping to um, have legislators come back, strengthen the moratorium, and, and extend it for um, a longer period of time. That is expiring at the end of the year, January 1. That's the expiration date. So um, if legislators want to address um, the concern of an eviction crisis and a housing crisis, I would anticipate they probably really do need to come back before the end of the year. <laughs> so it's expiring January 1st. The governor, of course, has the power to extend this because he still has the emergency powers. He just hasn't done so yet. Right. I think they extended the commercial eviction moratorium either last week or earlier this week. It all kind of blends together. So we could see something from the governor uh, today. We're, we're taping Friday or sometime in the next few weeks on that. But it is a really important issue. And you're right. The speaker said, Speaker Carl Hasty said they have to come back before the end of the year to or to some extent maybe negotiate with the governor to do something like that. But... Let's talk about taxing the rich, because that seems to be the big disagreement this week. Right. So Carl, the speaker, says they want to come back to tax the rich. Mandy, what is the governor saying? He doesn't want to do it right now. He, he never really wants to do it, right? <laughs> I mean, like, it's not even like a right now thing, but he has acknowledged that uh, they will have to raise taxes, but we don't know what taxes, right? Right. And, it, it, you know, both the governor as well as his budget director, Rob Mujica, has uh, mentioned that if they raise taxes on the wealthiest New Yorkers, they will leave New York. On the other side of things, you have folks who will say that that's not necessarily true, that it doesn't actually bear out, in fact. So 
We're going to have to wait and see. The question is whether the governor has the appetite to raise taxes on the wealthiest New Yorkers. There is strong support. We've seen the surveys that show that New Yorkers support raising taxes on the wealthiest. Right. Exactly. And Bern, you had some behind the scenes reporting on that this week. Tell us about that. Right. So yesterday, the governor did have a meeting with labor leaders um, about this exact topic, saying uh, he, he expressed his pleasure, needless to say, about Carl Hastie's uh, encouragement to raise taxes on the wealthiest. And now it's not just this blanket raise tax on the wealth. There's a host of different proposals. This pied -a terre tax, which is on mm -hmm. multiple homes, mm -hmm. one owner, stock transfer tax, several different proposals that really haven't been put into place prior. So the governor, you know, he met with these labor leaders and he said, I need your help here. I need your support because I can't be I can't be muscled around on this. And it's also, you know, he does want to come to a conclusion, a compromise at the end of the day, whether that's with the legislative leaders or with him saying, hey, I have a coalition of support and we actually don't have a majority of, you know, the general populace saying let's raise taxes on the wealthy. However, you know, he is saying he's holding out for Washington. What that looks like, how much are we going to get from Washington? I don't know. But at the end of the day, he is talking about raising taxes, potential layoffs, budget cuts. Something's going to have to be done because over the next two years, we have nearly $30 billion predicted in estimated revenue losses. So it's huge. It's crazy. It's massive. It's like an insurmountable amount of money that the state has... I don't know, dating back to however, I don't know how this compares to historically, but it's more than we've seen in over a decade. Right, but it's not something that can't be at least mitigated to some degree. Remember last right. year we had that massive Medicaid deficit that did end up getting fixed to a degree with MRT2. Mm -hmm. um, of course, fixed is also, it's still in motion, right. but there are ways to close the gaps. However, I the loss of revenue here is pretty insurmountable. Mandy, before we run out of time, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Economic Development, former Lindsey Boyle and now running for Manhattan Borough President, has accused the governor of sexual harassment. In the past few days, the story has kind of faded away. Do you think it'll stick to the governor? Um, I imagine it will. Um, it, we have to kind of wait and see. Uh, Ms. Boylan has um, taken to Twitter to express her grievances and has even said on Twitter that she is not willing to speak with any reporters about her allegations. So um, uh, as reporters, we're going to be left to hopefully either hearing from her again via Twitter or other people coming forward. Right, and the governor did deny the allegations the other day when he was asked about it. But right. again, we don't know what those specific allegations are Correct. until we speak to Lindsay. Exactly. Well, we'll see where it goes. Amanda Fries from the Times Union, Bernadette Hogan from the New York Post. Thank you both so much. Thanks for having us.